If you live in the Oshkosh area, you may have received an announcement from Wisconsin from Wisconsin Public Service informing of a 7% rate hike for the year 2011. If you are interested in reducing your electric bill, solar panel technology may be the way to go. Solar panels were developed in the 20th century and were based off of observations made in the 1900s. My background with solar panel technology stems from work done for the course Photovoltaic Installer Entry Level at FVTC's Appleton campus. Today I will inform of some of the ideas behind solar panels. I will give a brief history and discuss how they work and how they are manufactured. The people of first a brief history. First, a brief history behind solar panel technology. The following information on the people is from the book Photovoltaic Installer, is from the textbook Photovoltaic Systems. In 1839, French physicist Edmond Becquerel noticed increased electron emissions from an experiment when it was exposed to light. He was 19 years old at the time. In 1873, British engineer Willoughby Smith was conducting tests to find what material would be suited for underwater telegraph cables. He noticed that when selenium was exposed to light, it inhibited, it exhibited properties of a conductor rather than an insulator when it was exposed to darkness. In 1883, American inventor Charles Fritz invented the first, the first solar cell. It was a selenium wafer coated with gold. This cell was very efficient and never had a conversion factor above 1%. It wasn't considered practical. In 1954, Bell Laboratories invented the first practical solar cell. The people credited with this are Calvin Fuller, Gordon Pearson, and Daryl Chapman. This solar cell was primarily based on silicon. This solar cell, the first solar cells used in an earth-based application were for rural communication systems. What does the word photovoltaic mean? If you break it down, you have the word photo and volt, or light and electricity, essentially meaning electricity from light. The word photo is derived from the Greek word phos, meaning light. The word volt is named after an Italian physicist from a few centuries back named Alessandro Volta. Now that I've given a brief history behind solar panels, I will discuss how they work. Second, how do solar panels work? Solar panels are primarily, primarily consist of semiconductors. A semiconductor is a material which can exhibit properties as both a conductor and an insulator depending on, depending on the conditions that they are in. Most solar modules today utilize silicon which has been doped with another substance to change its electrical properties. Doping is the process of adding small amounts of impurities to a substance. For example, say you have a glass of water. Now say you have a couple cubes, one of sugar, one of water. You dump the sugar and water into the glass, stir it around. Now you have a glass of water that has been doped with salt and sugar. Solar panels are comprised of cells, and these cells are where the work starts to occur. The photovoltaic effect is the, principle, is the name of the principle that allows solar panels the photovoltaic effect is the name of the principle behind how solar panels do its thing. Energy.gov defines this phenomenon as what happens when light strikes an atom and that atom loses an electron. Most solar panels have two layers to them, a P layer and an N layer. The N layer loses electrons 
and the P layer attracts these electrons. The PN junction, or positive-negative junction, is the point of contact between these two layers. The PN junction has a magnetic field which pushes electrons away and allows them to do work. Now that I've talked on some of the principles behind solar, panel, solar panels, I will discuss how some of them are manufactured. Third, how are solar panels manufactured? The fabrication of cells consists of different processes. The end result is a device which can convert light into electricity. As mentioned before, most solar panels utilize silicon that has been doped. The silicon is processed into a wafer. A wafer is a thin, flat disc. It is on this wafer that dopants are added. Modules are primarily an array of cells, but also consist of other parts. Electrical connections are made in between cells, and additional wiring is added so that the module can be connected to other parts of the array. Bypass diodes are more commonly being installed onto modules. A bypass diode allows electricity to flow around a module when it is in a condition known as reverse bias. Reverse bias is a condition where a module will consume electricity rather than produce it. As without bypass diodes, as little as 10% of shading on a module or an array can cripple the other 90% even if it's in full sunlight. Other parts of a module include framing, laminate with an anti-reflective coating, and a back covering, though not all modules have a back covering. Some allow light to pass around the cells, be reflected off of what's, behi reflected off of what's behind the module, and absorbed into the back of the module. This increases efficiency is very little, but can help in some instances. As was previously mentioned, Wisconsin Public Service will be increasing the rate that they charge to consumers in the year 2011. Today, I've talked about the history behind solar panels and discussed how they work and how they are manufactured. The technology is not new and is still developing, so as time progresses, new insights, designs, and efficiencies and improvements and efficiencies are likely to occur. Thank you.